can't possibly beat the cuteness and likability of Ellen DeGeneres' Dory, can they? Hi, I'm Dory. Never mind. Hi, Dory! Ahoy there! <laughs> and now you're throwing Eugene Levy and Diane Keaton into the mix? Points for getting the famously inappropriate movie dad who keeps it tame throughout the film. I like sand. Sand is squishy. And so are jellyfish. We see the undertow and we say, Let's go. She may have a terrible memory, but at least she can rhyme. No. We will never forget you, Dory. I know one of the biggest criticisms of this film is whether it was actually necessary, but they had a really sweet story to tell that feels earned. Especially if you're anything like me, and Dory was your favorite part of Finding Nemo. Another Pixar score from Thomas Newman that does not disappoint. Yeah, I just, I heard someone say hello. Who? I didn't hear anybody say hello. I don't you think you can just throw Bill Hader and Kate McKinnon into this movie and get a quick win? Well, you are correct, sir. I'm sorry. I suffer from short-term memory loss. Sheesh, didn't expect to be feeling the tug on the heartstrings so early. But a tiny dory lost in the ocean montage is the fastest way to a rough evening for me. I was looking for something and I... Okay, totally get it. Date night. Have fun. Fortunately, a sunny disposition dory montage will cheer you up in no time. Oh my boat! It took my son! And now we get the same score from Finding Nemo like we're living this scene out from the other side. Very glad they didn't go down the prequel route. Sometimes it's not your fault, but it can cause you to wander. Mm -hmm. Sugar coating. Mommies and daddies. Mommies and daddies, right. Why are we talking about mommies and daddies? Oh, oh. You see, kids, when two fish love each other. Rolling with the punches. Oh! Oh! Two things here. Law of this little continuity builder making Mr. Ray's singing makes sense since it's a trait of his entire species. And again, Pixar blows my mind with its use of lighting, which, fun fact, was created using a whole new rendering program they developed. As brief as his appearance is, you can't help but love Crush. What does it look like? I'm a bit new to the memory thing, so I can't say for sure. I know it's early to start gushing about Ellen, but I, I can't help it. Dory is still my favorite. She's just always looking on the bright side. Pizza Planet Truck. Tron Legasquid. I'm Sigourney Weaver. Be careful, everyone. Sigourney Weaver's voice over loudspeakers means we're close to the end of civilization since we know she's the computer voice of the apocalypse. I know at this point after Finding Nemo and The Good Dinosaur, I shouldn't be impressed by these photorealistic water animations. I'm sorry, I just can't help it. I'm still impressed. And the sheen and light reflections on the fish when they're outside of the water. Just fantastic. Looks like we're done here. Dude, cut it out. You're a scientist. We talked about this. What? Scientists can't ham it up? I reject that notion. You let your hot dog and flag fly talking forceps guy. And thus begins one of the most enjoyable gags in this movie. What can't Hank blend into? And if he isn't hidden in every Pixar movie from here on out, we're going to have a problem. And Hank is a marvel of modern animation. His textures, his movements, his irises. He really is a beauty to behold. And he took two years to model. I just want to live in a glass box alone. That's all I want. I hear you, Hank. A glass box of solitude. Mmm, the silence. You interrupted my favorite dream. Is that the one about you laying on this rock? Yeah. Reaching for the stars. A113. Oh, 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 oh. Credit where credit is due. Pixar always manages to take actual animal sounds and incorporate them into comedy. Nothing will ever beat the seagulls, but this is a pretty great bark. Although it does make me think that every sea lion is a jerk. I don't like talking. I don't like chattering questions. And, How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, I'm fine too. Newsflash. Nobody's fine. All right, Ed. We really need you to just crank it up, man. Find that old man crankiness that lives inside you between Al Bundy and Jay Pritchett. You lost a tentacle? Well, then you're not an octopus. You're a septopus. Math lessons. I love shells. Hey, I live there. Yes, yes indeed. Most parents would do anything to keep their child safe, but Dory's parents really go above and beyond as we find out later. And cartoon adults, especially the human ones, aren't always the unsung heroes of these movies. So it's refreshing to see a depiction of some stellar parents. Hank the Muppet. I gotta blink. How do you hold your eyes open that long? Not even death can slow Dory's optimism. Can you please keep it down over there? Man, this is like a modern family reunion. And I'm continually confused as to why Dee Reynolds isn't cursing at everyone. Also, did they miss an opportunity to make her Becky the Bird? When something's too hard, Dory, you should just give up. Honestly? Oh, 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 what are we doing? I don't know, it's... Bet you never thought you'd see McNulty and String finally getting along and working together. Ow. She doesn't understand what I'm saying. Becky is quickly becoming my favorite silent Pixar character. No, not Hans. I'm looking for Hank. But you should always be looking for Hans Gruber. You never know when he might sneak up on you with an American accent. And then Finding Dory turned into a horror movie with the children again being the scary monsters. Pixar hates kids, but still an effective scene. Keep swimming, Just keep swimming, swimming. Well, that'll get you right in the old feels. Everybody inks. Just keep, keep, just keep. 
when being Dory. I dated a nice scallop for a while. Fun fact, in addition to voicing Crush the Turtle again, our director Andrew Stanton also voiced the long-winded, irritating clam. Oh, Shelly! Also shellfish pun. Wally Calendar. Another fun human to fish translation is how the chatter of the fish is like entering a crowded city street. I don't know how long ago exactly. Okay, you're in a hurry. I really can't tell where Ellen ends and Dory begins. I love her absolute optimism and quickness to give anyone and everyone the benefit of the doubt. There's so much to learn from Dory. The Blue Tangs are getting their own exhibit in Cleveland. John Ratzenberger getting his obligatory scene and giving us another glimpse of crab style lawn care. Oh no, it's happening. Gotta give them some credit for getting me really close to a panic attack. I wouldn't say I'm claustrophobic, but trapped underwater inside a maze of gross pipes. Yep, I, I, can't, I can't breathe. Guys, ooh, guys. What? Ooh. What? what All right, so we need someone charming, heartwarming, hilarious, and willing to make a fool of themselves while still coming off as lovable. Uh, you're just describing Phil Dumpy. That's Tyberell. Man, this is layered. We've got John McClane wiggling through the ventilation system, rounding out our diehard references that Pixar promised. And we've got Dallas being hunted by the Xenomorph while Lambert loses it, tying us back into Sigourney Weaver. I'm finding my son. You made all that happen. No, you didn't forget. I never told you. And uh, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure how many more times Marlon can learn this lesson, but sincere apology win. Fantastic! Listen! <gasps> Dude. <laughs> Another beautifully framed scene perfectly illustrating Dory's isolation. What would Dory do? I would look around. There's just water over there. And a lot of kelp over here. Kelp is better. I don't entirely agree with Marlon's praise of Dory for haphazardly just doing things without first thinking and planning, but this part of what would Dory do is very helpful. In times of trouble, calm down and solve one problem at a time. I don't know how you do it, Pixar. Rows of shells take an extremely tragic scene and turn me into a sobbing mess of a human being. I mean, it's a kid's movie. I knew this was coming. How did you still get me? Her parents have been using the things they know about their daughter to create a way for her to find her way home on the off chance that she stayed in the area. Talk about selflessness. Also, fish hugging. It's your destiny, destiny. Encouraging pep talks. And more hugging. We need your help! Back in! <laughs> Dory, follow me! No, no, wait! Man, this is a roller coaster of a finale. But you gotta get your new family together. And that's because the best things happen by chance, because that's life. Planning is important, but being able to go with the flow is a good lesson to learn. I learn it every few days when my plans and schedule completely change. I, 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 <laughs> What's that guy doing? In a scene where an octopus drives a truck off a cliff listening to the navigation of a fish to get back to the ocean, I read a lot of complaints about the doors opening. But see, there's this theory. It's called gravity and sometimes it makes latches move when the only thing holding them in place is gravity. What a wonderful world. Also, this scene is amazing. And that's what you get for being mean to Gerald. And now for one of the best Bond credit montages featuring Septipus, Hank Septipus. And since I have no shame, I feel the need to point out that there was a quick millisecond where I thought, wow, I can't believe they got Ed O'Neill to do this long non-speaking credit scene. Jacques still keeping his living quarters clean. I'll be honest, I was a little nervous in the first 15 minutes of this movie that we were getting to a rehash of Finding Nemo with similar beats. The reef, the turtles, chases by giant predators, but they jumped from one to the next really quickly, almost as a way to reestablish the universe. So it totally worked. Finding Dory manages to bring us back into the underwater world, but also introduces a whole new location that really adds to the overall story. And with the addition of new side characters that almost steal the show as much as Dory did in Finding Nemo, I was pulled into this movie from start to finish. I actually expected it to feel more cash grabby and not really have a story, but the storytelling and message delivery is where Finding Dory actually really succeeds, and not in a hit you over the head with it sort of way. This movie takes the plot device of living with disabilities from Finding Nemo and his fin and puts it at the core of this film. Generally, a movie with a forgetful character would play up the annoyance of that character strictly for laughs. And even though Ellen does have some really funny moments, opinion is drooping. you end up sympathizing with her rather than those that have to deal with her. Marlon is the one I find myself getting annoyed with because of his lack of patience with Dory. And using the rehab center as a main location for a lot of the movie gave us an even deeper look at people. Fish. Well, some of them are mammals. Sea creatures. Showing empathy and compassion to each other as they all have issues. Gerald is the one exception to the rule, but Disney and Pixar both have a weird, make the ambiguously mentally disabled side character the butt of jokes fetish. Kids, don't bully anyone. Ever. For any reason. Fortunately, Gerald does get some sweet rock restitution in the end. Even the somewhat self-serving octopus comes around. Which is another thing I really appreciated about this film. The lack of a true mustache twirling villain. The biggest antagonist each character has to deal with is fear of their own limitations and shortcomings. And suffocating. And then beyond that, and almost equally as important, we got a story about families. 
Dory spends the entire movie searching for her parents only to learn the importance of her surrogate family in Marlin and Nemo, something I think adoptive parents would appreciate. Another feel-good outing from Pixar. As usual, in addition to throwing me through the gamut of emotions, from terror to happiness to full-on grown man sobbing, Finding Dory continues the Pixar tradition of being absolutely hilarious throughout. And sometimes all it takes is for a character like Becky to be on screen and I'm rolling. While Finding Dory may not live up to Finding Nemo in every way, it has some technological successes and character development that has me still excited for their future. Which is hopefully full of die-hard and alien crossovers. Someone seriously needs to make a Family Guy-style remake of Alien with the cast of Finding Dory. I'll pay literally tens of dollars to see that. I mean, I'm okay with crazy. You know I could see that. The gem of the uh, Baltic. I know how we can get the locomotion. Open ocean. The brooch of the Atlantic. Uh, soap and lotion. Open ocean. 